what is going on y'all welcome back to a brand new video down here at the ranch before we get started in today's video uh that snowstorm that big storm that came into texas last week uh we did not have too big of a damage here at the ranch all the deer in the pens in my breeder pens um they all survived they're all completely fine uh we had a couple leaks at the house there's little like minor minor um, um pipe issues but other than that it was fine i talked to my ranch manager here and he said man we got like he said we got a foot of snow um all the all the food plots all the hay fields they were all just snowed in everything else was fine um i real worried with the deer especially the fawns a1 fawns that were in there i didn't know how they were going to do uh manage with the cold but they were fine they survived we'll go check on them later today in this video but first where we're starting off we're here on the fence line right now and we're gonna be setting some snares like always we have a major coyote problem and uh, this is the first snare we're working with here we got basically everything set up the thing got pulled um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and reset this. I'm also gonna actually have to go into town. Um, I have to go back into Ace Hardware and uh, get get a whole bunch of more snares. I might get two dozen this time because man, we're running through snares just like this. So the thing with these snares is basically at one time, whether you're catching a coon, bobcat, coyote, possum, skunk, whatever goes in there, the snare always gets messed up, tangled somehow. As you can see, this is an old snare, literally ruined. Um, I think that was a coon that went in there. They just tear it up. They go through the fence um, and just absolutely destroy them. You cannot reuse them, of course, once once you catch an animal. So that kind of kind of sucks. It's a one and done kind of thing. Um, so that's why I'm going to have to go back into Ace Hardware later today. And I'll probably pick up two dozen this time. Uh, just because those dang coons keep getting in here, messing up the trap, messing up the whole, the whole system, uh, basically. Real fast, if you're new, if you've never seen my channel before, if you do not know who I am, my name is Reed DuPont. Um, I'd really appreciate it if you would hit that sub button as well as like this video. Um, that would mean a lot. But oh uh, yeah, with that, we're gonna get right into this video. Oh baby, y'all take a look at this. This this right here is a very good sign. Um, so I actually caught a yoke in this exact hole uh, probably about three weeks ago. Roll that clip real fast. That's what he looks like. That's our first yoke of the year. Uh, Guys, why I'm so excited is first, look, this is red dirt all around me, right? Red dirt up in here, red dirt through here. But the thing that I'm looking at is this red dirt compared to this red dirt is a different color. This is super dark. This is super light, which tells me that a yote has been using this trail recently. When I'm talking recently, maybe even last night, the night before that. Or the night before that i mean this is recent tracks you can see this stuff's all dug up um super super recent it rained here so i mean that ground took all this water in turned it light gray um that coyote went through here dug it up that's how i know it was a coyote because he dug it up a coon would have just gone right through coyote dug it up and basically dug up all this uh all this wet soil and this right here is a fresh track so i'm just gonna go ahead this snare was already here um, like I said, he probably just pulled it. Um, I actually don't know if this was set. I might have unset it, set them all before I left. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead, reset it back up. It is a little damage right here. Um, y'all probably can't see that, but it is a little damage. But I, like I said, I don't got, I don't got any more snares until I go to A. So I'm just going to have to work with this. Um, I don't want to lose an opportunity tonight, um, to get this yoke. He's going through here. It's fresh and we need to take advantage of that. All right. That's another pretty good. See, the thing about this one compared to the one that we're just at is, of course, it's still a really good trail. Um, goats are going under it, but it does not look active. There's no there's no uh, fresh dirt, dark dirt, uh, dirt as y'all can see. It's all it's all that dry dirt. Uh, that doesn't that doesn't mean and nothing's gone through there because I guarantee you coyotes have been going through here. Um, they just don't have to dig. So there's that. But looks like we also had a snare here as well. Like I said, I haven't been here in a week since that storm. Um, so I had to unset all these, um, or they were already pulled. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and reset this one. Uh, but man, I hope I hope we can get some in this one. We got some black buck on the right here. Looks like a big old buck. Got a couple does. Y'all take a look at that. Woo! Start hauling in that brush. That was a pretty nice buck. There's some more does right here. More does coming in. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh -hoo! that is awesome. All right, so uh, I want to take a look at something. I'm down at the river. Um, we're gonna be doing some hog hunting tonight, so I'm gonna check those feeders. But 
I want to check this Freer River out, check the river out, see if there's any water in there, um, what it looks like from after this storm. Uh, wow, okay, wow. I'm gonna turn the camera around for y'all. See what we got here. This is a good old path. Hogs, deer have been working this path. Uh, Freer River's there. See that feeder's right over there. I got a ground line sitting right there. Um, oh man. Oh, you gotta watch out for this limb. This limb will take you out. There's some water down there. So we do a lot of, uh, there's some bass actually that do live in here. Um, but there's a lot of, lot of gar. Alligator gar, black gar, spotted gar. It's running too. Man. Y'all can see right there. It's running. If you guys would maybe be uh, interested in me doing like a full, full video of a, like a gar bow fishing trip. Um, not a trip, but a, uh bow like just like a bow fishing episode let me know in the comments below um we can do that we've shot multiple six footers uh, my brother shot a seven two seven three so if you want to do that if y'all want to see that um let me know in the comments below what we're gonna go ahead and do and is get ready for tonight there's a ground line there we're not gonna be sitting the ground line we're gonna be sitting that tower blind way over there um we have that feeder there then we have a feeder on the back side and we're gonna go check these feeders, make sure they're feeding them, make sure that the timer's going off at the right time. All right, first feeder. All right, it's about, from the glass thing, it looks like it's about halfway. Yeah, it's about just under halfway full. It's, that'll be fine. Um, time's 104 right now. All right, we got it going off at 6.50 in the morning, 7.15 in the afternoon. And we got 8.45, that is the prime time. I'm not gonna touch that time because it's been running at 8.45 for, what, 13 seconds? So these these hogs, they're used to it. They're used to a schedule um, and, I mean, they'll be ready to go. 8.45, 13 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put that in my phone so I remember. Um, oh yeah, we're good. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in my phone so I remember. 8:45 tonight. The feeder's going off. That means we'll probably get in the blind, probably around 8:30. Um, I'm gonna put the other feeder. I'm gonna put the other feeder. This one's going at 8:45. I'm gonna put that one at like 8:50. Do like a five five minute time difference, just so they're not going off the same time. Different sounds, different times. All right. So I want to take a second and just show you the tower blind for where we're gonna be hunting tonight. Um, of course, tonight it's gonna be dark. We might have the green light. We might not. Um, but just in case we don't, y'all y'all won't be able to see much. So I want to show you it now. Kind of the scenery what it looks like um, this is the tower blind right here and this is one of the newer ones we have for the ranch um, it's a lot bigger than the ones that we normally have it's also a lot uh shorter than the ones that we normally have um, i'm gonna go ahead walk up here and show y'all show y'all what's inside so you open the door and that's big it's big you can definitely there's two chairs in here but you can definitely fit three people in here um it's got a nice kind of a Spot to put your ammo, your binoculars, just like a rest all the way around. And uh, these are your shots here. So there's a feeder way down there. There's that ground line, that's where we just were at. And then there's a feeder way down there. At the top's open right now because I'm filling corn. I gotta go to the saddle and get some more corn. Um, but those are, those are the two feeders. That's probably, it's about 150 yard shot um, both ways. We're primed, ready to go. River runs right up, right across here on that back side. So, I mean, you'll get hogs that will, you know, travel from this feeder to this feeder. It's a big old game trail. Um, so, they'll work that as well. And, man, we're ready to go. Oh, yeah. So, now we're on the other side of the river where I got that river blind. This is where the hog trap is, as you all know. But guys, take a look at this. Oh, my gosh. When you see that, that is a sign we got hogs. Wow. They have been absolutely destroying the corn, the ground. There's a bunch of hog prints in there. You can see right there. And oh my gosh, that is a good sign. I need to get this trap trap back up, um, get it running again. And I think we'll be able to catch some hogs this time. Um, definitely 100%. I haven't seen that, this little stuff like this, in a long time. Um, so that's, that's good news. I don't know, how the heck did this stick get here? This big old log has never been here before. There's a bunch of uh, 
Looks like the turkey vultures flying around. I don't know if something's dead back there. All right, y'all. So we are in the uh, barn right now. Um, I'm gonna go over to uh, the office. We got a little office. And uh, I wanna show you some stuff that we just got in. I literally brought down to the ranch um, when I got down here um, that we will actually be using in actually like a couple days, next week, um, we will be using them. So this is the office right here. So you walk in, let me turn the lights on. This is the office. And I'm gonna show you all what we got. It's actually in this cabinet right here. I put it in here earlier today, as y'all can see from the box. Some exciting stuff in here. So I'm gonna get this set up and I will open this up and I'll show y'all what's inside. All right, so inside this box, some exciting stuff that we will be using this upcoming week. We're talking literally um, four or five days from now. Y'all will see a full video over that. But I'm gonna go ahead and open her up. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, baby. This is what I'm talking about. Y'all take a look at this. I'm just gonna show y'all, and you can probably guess what we'll be doing next week. Uh, let me grab the camera here. Y'all take a look at this. Bam! How many is that? I forgot how many I ordered. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You might ask, 18 what? What the heck are these? 18 darts by new darts. These things are insane. Um, let's see. Oh, this is a new version. I've never seen this the slow inject. Okay, so I got so I got 1.5 cc's. Did I get all 1.5 cc's? What is this? Okay, so that's a one cc. I'm guessing these are gonna be different. 1.5 cc. Okay, so I think I got I got one cc's and 1.5 cc's. Now, I'm gonna show y'all what these look like. I'm actually gonna pull up a, uh, a 1cc for y'all and a 1.5cc for y'all um, and show y'all those and a little bit about the process that we're gonna be doing next week. So first off, you might ask, why do you have darts? Why the heck do you have darts? These darts are for our breeder pens, for our DMP pens, um, or anytime we dart a deer out in the pasture. Uh, we might dart a deer if they're sick, if they're injured, um, if we're moving deer from one pen to another, there's a variety of reasons why we do it. Um, we darted, man, we probably darted 15 deer last year. Um, and there's a bunch of different kinds of darts. We're gonna go ahead. These are the uh, one cc's. So what, what, what does a cc mean? It basically tells you how big the dart is and how big, how much liquid the dart can hold. That's, that's the, essentially what it comes down to. Uh, so these are one cc's. I'm gonna show you the difference. They go all the way up to, you know, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so this is a one cc dart, right there. One cc dart. I'm gonna show you a two cc real fast. Not a two cc, a 1.5 cc. Uh, not too much of a difference, but when you're actually shooting it, it makes a big difference. There's the one and a half cc. So you got one cc and one and a half cc. That probably is not focused, but whatever. And then hold on, there, I mean, and then like I said, there's two cc's, three cc's. Hold on, I actually got right here. What's this? On the table, here's an old three cc. So there's a three cc. So that compared to a one cc, take a look at that. Big difference, big difference. And it said it might be blurry on there, um, so I'll show you all close up here in a second. Thank you, we have five cc's. Uh, so it just matters what animal you're shooting it with. You know, you don't want to shoot a fawn with a uh, 2cc. That's too much liquid um, that you're giving them, whatever kind of whatever kind of drugs you're giving them, that's too much that can end up killing the animal. Uh, for a horse, right, if you're trying to dart a horse, you're gonna want to use something big, right? Um, like a, you know, 6cc. It actually tells you on here um, what the dart is good for animal-wise. Um, you kinda, you kinda range it off how big the animal is, how much they can take, stuff like that, the age of the animal. And then they also all come with needles. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab one of those older darts and just show y'all how you rig it up um, if you're looking to dart a deer. So first thing you wanna do, you wanna grab yourself some water, um, glass of water. Then what you wanna do is you wanna grab a needle, not a dart, but a needle. Um, so this is what a needle looks like right here. Bam. And what you wanna do, I don't remember the last time I used this, I don't know what I put inside of this needle. Um, that is very important to make sure that you clean it out uh, because whatever you're injecting in here, you're ejecting into the dart, whatever you're ejecting in the dart is going in the deer. So I have no idea, I, of course there's nothing in there, right? But you just don't know, you just never know um, what's on the sidewalls of these needles. 
So all you're doing, fill this up, just like this. Bunch of water's in there, shake it up a little bit. Then all you gotta do is squirt it back in there. Bam, just like that. What you're gonna do, I'm gonna take a glass container here. Uh, we're gonna take some uh, vitamin B. This is vitamin B right here. What you're gonna do, you're gonna take your needle, shoot it right there in that glass, just like that. You're then gonna flip it upside down and you take however amount you're, you want. So I mean, for instance, we're gonna use a uh, one cc dart, right? So how much do we need? One cc. So we're gonna go to the one mark. I know y'all can't see this, um, but Bear with me here. So we're gonna go to the one mark, just like that. Bam, there you go. I always tap it to get any of the air bubbles out. You wanna make sure there's no air bubbles. Um, and there you go, that is your uh, needle right there. You then take your dart, right? You stick the needle in the dart. And then all you do, push the liquid into the dart and bam, you're good to go. It's that simple. You then take it out. And what you wanna do is you wanna grab some um, it's basically, it's basically just like an antibiotic. It's called a triple antibiotic. And all you're doing, I'm not making a dart right now, so I didn't, I didn't put anything in there. So you can see the liquid is still in there. Uh, all you're doing, get a little antibiotic, put it on the top of the blade, uh, top of the point here, the tip. Um, and that just helps, you know, when that, when that dart goes into the deer, for instance, there's gonna be a little hole. So this helps with any kind of infections um, and stuff like that. You don't wanna get, you wanna get any bugs or dirt, or dust in there um, that could eventually infect the deer and end up getting the deer sick and they could die. Um, so you just add a little antibiotic right there. And there you go, it's that simple. What we got going for next week, it's gonna be pretty cool. Um, I got a cameraman coming down and we're gonna get some good content. Uh, we're gonna be using the, where are we? We're gonna be using the one C seats. So that was that same dart I just showed you. We're using the smallest dart we got, that guy right there. And we are shooting starting all of our fawns in our breeder pens. So I'm talking all of A1's fawns for the most part, all, all his fawns, he's got nine fawns. Um, we're gonna be darting all of them. We're gonna be darting them, we're gonna be tagging them, we're gonna be pulling hair so we can um, register them. We're doing the whole nine yards, then we're moving them into a separate pen. Uh, the bucks are going to a pen, the fawn does are going to a separate pen. Um, it's gonna be a big process. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna line some darts up. Y'all can see just kind of the different sizes because uh, it's pretty cool to see depending on what, what you're darting. As you see right here, there's a big, big size difference between the one cc, that's a one and a half cc, that's a three cc, and this right here is a five cc. Um, this thing is a bulimic. Take a look at that. That thing is insane. Um, and I mean, it's crazy. Like the droppage on these are ridiculous. Um, even like the, even the one cc will drop like, so much, like literally like five inches will drop. You wanna make sure you side it in uh, with your dart gun, get all that stuff situated. Hey, also one more thing I wanna point out, um, you wanna be very careful when you're messing with this stuff, right? Especially if you're using knockdown medicine. This is knockdown medicine. Why don't you prick yourself, your finger, your wrist, your arm, your leg. You got knockdown sleep medicine in you, you're gonna to go to sleep, right? What, who's gonna help you, especially if you're by yourself? So you wanna be very careful you don't prick yourself, inject the fluid inside of you. Uh, if I got pricked by knockdown medicine, man, I'd probably get the reversal. I got some reversal right here. I'd probably stab myself, prick myself again, and give me some reversal. Just FYI, if you're dealing with um, this kind of process, you're in the deer breeding business, um, you're a vet, um, or anything kind of like that, especially also when you're out in the field, these deer are asleep, one might wake up, it's happened all the time, you might get kicked in the chest. Here we go, prime example, right, right here, prime example. You see this hoodie? It's all torn up. That's from my deer. She woke up and she kicked me and basically tore my jacket up. It's all ripped up in the back too. Prime example, right there. Yeah, be careful when you're handling this type of stuff. All right, now that I just thought of this, this would be the best clickbait ever. Reed uses deer breeding needle to remove blood from himself. Yeah, yeah, we like that, we like that. Oh, here, here, here's the video, here's the video. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that is so much blood there, y'all, take a look at that. Bam, just like that, I'm playing, guys. All right, we're heading over to the deer breeding pens. We gotta feed our deer, we gotta clear some brush in the pens, spawns are dropping this summer. Um, we gotta get the pens all ready. I know it's a little early, but why not start right now, right? Um, right up front there, there's Ace and there's Hercules. Hercules is my one-year-old. He is from A1, 
And then Ace is my uh, three-year-old. Take a look at them. It's just them in this big pen right here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and feed them. They might not come in, I don't know. They're a little skittish compared to my other deer. But uh, they're looking pretty good as normal. We're at the pen with A1, all of his spawns, and the does that he bred with. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give them some corn. So I mean, yeah, all, all the does, all the fawns, and A1, um, they looked good. I couldn't get a shot of A1 on camera, um, but they all look good. They all survived the storm, which is good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shut this off real fast. This is the electric fence right here. I've shut it off. Um, like I said, Ace and Hercules is over there. I'm gonna drive all the way in the back, and we're gonna do some trimming um, on those back two pens way in the left, way in the end. All right, so we're in the back here, and we're going to go inside here, and I'm gonna start clearing this stuff. So this is where A1, all those guys up in the front were at the beginning um, of like 2020. We moved them to a separate pen. Um, I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna clear a little bit. Of course, I can't get on camera. I don't have a cameraman with me. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put the camera down. And I'm just gonna clear this. I wanna make it so I can basically see through this entire pen make it look a little better everything's dead of course because of that snowstorm that came through here um but i want to be able to you know see through it i want to be able to see the deer that are in my pen you know um of course i want to keep the grass up for the summer some shade um for these fawns to be able to get under um and hide and stay stay cool but like this stuff like man i want to take this stuff down some of these lower limbs i want to take down just so i can see every deer that's inside of my pens make sure they're healthy and all that good stuff. All right, so I was only able to get like half a pen done out of the 10 pens that I have. So it's still, still a big process. We got a lot of work to do with those pens. But um, if you want to see the hog hunting video that's going down tonight, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Double tap like this video. I'd also appreciate that. Um, should be good. Hopefully we can get some hogs coming in. And uh, with that, thank you all again for watching this video. And stay tuned for that next one. Peace.